The CD9120 frame mount seater after delivery assembly. When lifting the drill off the trailer, a four point lift can be performed using slings in the locations shown. Sling length, sling type, and load rating may need to be adjusted based on how the unit is configured. Note that there will be hydraulic lines in the area circled below that may need to be nudged over to avoid interference. Installing the mainframe running gear. Set mainframe stands at a minimum of 30 inches to support the frame. Line up the wheels, noting the L and R decals on each arm. Install mounting hardware and torque bolts to 400 foot-pounds. Ensure inside tires are leading when driving forward. Ensure tires are inflated to the pressures listed on the tire pressure decal. Install wing running gear arms. Ensure that the front caster leg runs along the inside of the tire when facing forward. Note the L and R decals on the arms. Install wing running gear as high as possible with respect to the frame. Install mounting hardware and torque to 400 foot-pounds. Ensure tires are inflated to the pressures listed on the tire pressure decal. The rear outer wing running gear may have been installed on the mainframe if towing was required after unloading of the drill. If this is the case, you will have to remove the rear running gear from the mainframe and install it on the outer wing mounting plates. Make sure that the mounting plates are making even contact top to bottom and side to side. The one inch bolts are to be torqued to 400 foot pounds. Reinstall the four gauge wheels that were removed for shipping. Verify that the rear wing tires are inflated to the correct pressure. Use one and a half anti-turn pins, washers and cotter pins to install the hitch assembly. Reattach steel line to drill and hitch according to drawing 9373-00-10 and 9373-02. Ensure hydraulic lines are routed as shown on the image. Hydraulic blocks are attached with U-bolts in the locations shown. Place the bundle of hoses running from the hydraulic blocks in the saddles and secure with long bolts. Reattach steel lines to mounting brackets on hitch. Reattach flexible lines to the stand as shown in the image. Refer to the image to orientate the plastic hose blocks. Bolt the lockout valve to the mount at the front of the hitch. If equipped for 7.5 inch spacing, unbolt and reposition this bar so that it utilizes all four mounting bolts. During shipping, the opener bar will be placed further ahead and mounted with only one bolt on each side. Check that the opener bar is in the correct position in the slots for the selected openers. Dimensions are given to the center of the U-bolts. Ensure the opener with cap cylinder ports is installed to the right. Use a forklift or other lifting device to help move openers into place. Install the 126 inch hoses from the middle row manifold to the left rear row. Tie the two openers together with 18 inch hoses. Ensure the unused right cylinder ports are capped. Ensure the left side opener is connected to manifold 4 port 4 and the right side opener is connected to manifold 5 port 8. Joining the drill in the tank. Ensure the drill is on stands so that the middle opener bar is 29 inches from the ground level and reasonably flat. Secure the forklift or tractor used for positioning the cart to the rear shipping stand. Once secure, remove the shipping stands on the opposite side of the cart. Loosely bolt the lower connection arms to the drill frame. Do not tighten at this time. Always use caution when people are in close proximity while positioning equipment. With a person on each side of the cart directing the driver, Carefully move the cart into position so that each lower connection arm can be loosely bolted to the cart frame. Use a forklift or similar lifting implement to position the upper connection arms between the cart frame and drill. Loosely bolt each upper connection arm to the cart frame. 
Once all four arms are in place, tighten and torque all bolts to the specification noted in the instructions. Verify there are no gaps between the plates. Use the crow foot adapter where required to access 1 inch bolts. Refer to the assembly document for modified torque values when using the adapter. Once the drill and tank are joined, the transport support stand used to move the cart may be removed from the rear. Install the upper S-pipes to the primary manifold elbow. Install the components for the Fan 1 primary. For double shoot systems, this will be the inside pipe. Align the S-pipes with the primary elbow as close as possible within 1 8 of an inch in the vertical and horizontal directions. Ensure the elbow is oriented correctly. Align the bottom edges of the S-pipe and the transfer line as closely as possible. The S-pipe may be up to 1 8 of an inch below the transfer line, but never above. If installing a secondary primary, align within 1 8 of an inch in the vertical and horizontal directions. Align the bottom edges of the S-pipe and the transfer line as closely as possible. The S-pipe may be up to 1 8 of an inch below the transfer line, but never above. Connecting electronic components. Remove the CM40 ECU from the tank and bolt it to the ECU cluster located on the inner arm. This CM40 is also referred to as the master ECU. Use the ECU decal located on the inner portion of the outer arm to plug harnessing into the ECUs. Plug corresponding tank harnesses into channels 1 to 3 on the CM40. Channel 4 on the CM40 is used for drill control harness, such as Liftmaster and Packmaster. The EM20 is used for suctional control harnessing if included, and should have remained connected. Use chain links and wire tabs to zip tie the harnessing into place once connected. Connect the remaining harnesses using the joining schematic drawing 937385. Hydraulic Connections Refer to the labels stamped on the tank hydraulic block when connecting hydraulics from the drill to the cart. P1 and T1 is the main hydraulic supply from the tractor to the main hydraulic block. Brake, auxiliary, ASC, and fan 2 are optional and may not be included. To minimize pressure drop and ensure adequate fan speed, the hydraulic supply, quick couplers, and male fitting must be removed and the hoses connected directly to the main block. The cart has been pressurized and tested at the factory, therefore charged with hydraulic fluid. For the main supply hoses, remove one quick coupler at a time and connect fan hoses to the block to minimize oil loss. The red case drain hose, brake, and sectional control quick couplers should remain on the units. These are low flow functions where pressure drop will not affect performance. Install surge brake. Install surge brake cylinder with fittings on top of cylinder and hoses routed to the left side of the drill. Route the surge brake leads labeled reverse switch and brake press to the surge brake block. Brake system should be pressurized and bled as per instructions provided. Warning. Conveyor functions are very sensitive to air in the system and may cause unexpected movement and creep without engaging the conveyor. Follow these steps once the hydraulic connections have been completed. Unpin all conveyor cylinders. Run fan 1 and fan 2 if equipped for 2 minutes to remove air from the main block and hydraulic lines. Activate the fill fill cal mode with the remote. Run the conveyor at slow speed for 2 minutes to clear all the air from the conveyor block. Cycle each conveyor cylinder circuit 6 times in each direction to remove any air trapped in the lines. Repin the cylinders. Move conveyor rear saddle to field position and remove the shipping stop from the inner arm. Adjust so arms are snug to indicated stops when retracted. Install the conveyor downspout with the supplied clamps. Note that some two tank units use two hose clamps and others use one band clamp. Both are adequate and the same step supply. Install outer dual wheels if equipped. Line up rim holes and wheel studs, then position in place so that larger holes are aligned. 
All lugs should be pointing down when viewed from the rear of the unit. Install the first dual wheel outer clamp segment. Position clamp segment with second hole at larger rim hole as shown. Repeat these steps for the remaining four outer clamp segments. Install and secure the wheel nuts in pattern shown below. Torque wheel nuts to 450 foot-pounds. Fill all car tires according to the tire pressure decal. Install safety light arms. Remove the two bolts at the base of the arms and reinstall with the arms pointing outwards. Loosen the two bolts on the top of the arms and extend the arms so that they protrude past the tires and are visible from front and rear during transport. Wing Tank Funnel If equipped with a wing tank, hang the funnel on mount location on the rear of the wing tank catwalk. Install the rear tow hitch tongue. 